This is Gary Atensi with CNTV, and today we're in Castle Rock, Colorado. We are at Castle Rock Aikido. Since 2007, they have been providing Japanese traditional martial arts for folks here in Castle Rock, as well as the entire Douglas County. I am here with the owner, Sean. Thank you for joining us here tonight. Let's begin, first of all, share with me a little bit about what got you involved in this type of industry. Uh, it's actually... Uh I sort of fell into it, um, which you probably hear a lot. Uh, I used to be a chiropractic physician, and yeah, and in 2006, I actually broke my back, and I couldn't walk at all for over 14 months. And um, uh, being a chiropractic doctor with a bad back is really bad marketing, uh, so I don't do that anymore. Um, but I couldn't walk at all for a year, and one of the things that I did when I was younger is I practiced Aikido, Japanese Aikido. I did that in New Jersey and Iowa and South Carolina and also here in Colorado. Um, and so while I was healing, I had to sort of reinvent myself and think about, well, what am I going to do for a career and things like that? And, and uh, how's my life going to be if I can't walk? Well, my wife said, um, why don't you start an Aikido school? <clears throat> and I said, um, I said, well, one, I'm crippled. And uh, two, I'm not an instructor. So. Um, I looked at some schools in the area to think about when I healed, I could become a student somewhere. And I drove all the way up to Denver, which was the closest school. And it took me an hour and a half to get there in traffic because um, classes started very early in the evening. And it took me 45 minutes to get home. And I said to my wife, this is going to work. So she said, why don't you start one here in Castle Rock? I said, OK. Um, so what we did is we actually started looking for teachers that were interested in teaching but weren't interested or didn't have the resources or the time or the skills to run a business. So um, in 2007 we did just that. We started uh, um, attracting teachers that were interested in teaching and I basically ran, ran the school. That's a great story, Sean. Let me ask you this. Like you said, you did this back when you were a kid. In our um, ever go, go, go society anymore, do you think that the practicing of martial arts is more needed and, and popular today than possibly back when you did it as a kid? You know, I wouldn't say it's any more or less popular. Uh, is it needed? Um, depends on what kind of person you are. Uh, one of the um, People train martial arts, they train Aikido or any other martial art for all sorts of reasons. And uh, some of those reasons are obviously self-defense, others are fitness, but others are looking to um, just improve their assertiveness in life. Some are looking to improve their, their cognizance, of, you know, their awareness and, and uh, uh, things like that. Uh, and other people are just looking for something fun to do. We have a lot of retired military here who join and they obviously know how to take care of themselves, but they're looking for a social activity. Interesting. Unlike um, other martial arts out there, um, Aikido is non-competitive. Explain to me why that is and how it came about. Well, Aikido was uh, developed um, over uh, basically a lifetime of, of this gentleman in Japan named Morihei Ueshiba. Um, he developed it over the course of 50 years, but uh, World War II occurred during that period. And uh, World War II affected him very, um, very strongly. Uh, and he decided that the ultimate aim of any martial art shouldn't be to defeat somebody. It should be um, victory over oneself. So the philosophy, the, there's a, there's a um, I, I hesitate to use the word pacifist, but there's a, there's a passivity to Aikido um, that we teach uh, rather prominently here. I mean, we're, we're talking about a martial art that is really nonviolent, non-aggressive, um, basically, yet it works in a way that you don't have to hurt your attacker. Right, yeah, we, you have the ability to, and that's the cognizance that I was talking about. Okay. It's about developing a skill where, yes, you have the ability to hurt someone and you choose not to. Um, you use only the amount of force that's needed to defend yourself. Um, the goal isn't to hurt somebody else, the goal is to make sure that someone else doesn't hurt you. So it's about um, learning to use the appropriate amount of force. So we're talking about a, an attack route, they're normally a linear attack. Are you taking this energy and redirecting it? Is that what basically is happening? Yes, a lot of martial arts, and I, I come from uh, uh, some other martial arts, so I have background in those so-called linear martial arts, okay. and a lot of our students do too. And then I eventually found my way to Aikido, but Aikido um, is largely based on circles, where um, it's about deflecting an attack with the least amount of energy um, with a, an economy of force, and uh, circularity is a major component of that. Why block something forcefully when you can blend with something instead?
and it makes your body last a whole lot longer. That's fascinating. So instead of going against, you're really going in harmony with that energy or spirit, really. Right. That, that's exactly what you're doing. You're taking someone, uh, a, um, an attacker, and it doesn't actually doesn't have to be a self-defense situation. You can take the principles of Aikido and you can blend them. You can take them off the mat, as we say, and into your daily work life. You can use it um, to, uh, how to how to deal with dic difficult people at work or how to deal with your children. It's really all about, um, you know, we have three principles in Aikido. One is to blend with the attack or what we call get offline. In the teen classes, uh, we say things like, what do you do if there's a big truck coming? And none of the teens ever get it wrong. They all say the same thing. They say, get out of the way. So we teach people to, one, get out of the way, redirect the energy of the attack to a more peaceful resolution. And that's basically how Aikido works. It, it's not competitive, but yet it takes place in the practice between two people, uh, normally somebody and an attacker. Share with us how that works. What, what goes on out there? Well, generally what will happen is um, it takes at least two or more uh, people to practice Aikido. Uh, generally, one person acts as the attacker and one person practices self-defense techniques. Um, the person will, will mimic an attack and uh, will once again blend with that energy um, rather than clash with it and take the person's balance, which is critical. Sometimes we refer to Aikido as human Jenga, except the goal in Jenga, you know, the little stick game, right? Yeah. In Jenga, the goal is to not knock over the tower. Well, in Aikido, it's the opposite. The goal is to knock over the tower. So it's human Jenga. How can we displace this person's energy, this force that they're giving us, and uh, let them defeat themselves? Many who actually see the practice, they, they almost say it's like watching a dance, if you will. And yet, I mean, the two people have to really be in harmony. If not, it can actually be dangerous. <laughs> it can, and, and, and we hear that a lot, that it almost looks dance-like. And, and I always clarify that for people. It looks like that in the dojo. It looks like that on videos, like YouTube videos. It looks dance-like, and that is not um, how it would look in a self-defense situation. It looks dance-like only in the school, only during practice. That dance-like quality is actually a safety um, mechanism. We have to um, work with each other and move in particular ways to avoid injury. Uh, we always say we've got two arms. Well, if you, you know, if you hurt your partner's left elbow and then you hurt your partner's right elbow, you can only do the technique twice. And that's no fun, right? So in our class, you know, uh, what we do is we teach people how that dance-like quality to avoid injury. So sometimes you'll see people, and I'm sure you'll see it tonight, you'll see people flipping and rolling. That actually won't happen in a real self-defense situation, at least not most likely. Um, that is a, uh, that is a, um, uh, a defense practice. Uh, it's a protective mechanism that we teach all the students here. So really, there's more than just uh, muscle at work here. We're talking about flexibility, timing, control, uh, properly falling, all the above, really. Yes, if you, do, um, if you do Aikido properly, there's no muscle involved. Um, it's, it's purely body physics. And you'll see that tonight. You'll see uh, uh, lots of smaller, um, smaller men, smaller women, uh, literally taking down people substantial, you know, 50 pounds heavier than them because it's not about muscle. Uh, in real estate, they always say location, location, location is the right. principle behind real estate. It's no different in Aikido. It's all about location. Where are you? Where are you placing your body relative to theirs to give you a um, a, a a leveraged position so that muscle force and mass is no longer an issue. Interesting. So like you say, if it's done properly, no muscle involved, yet um, you're definitely being very fit while you're out there. Um, you're obviously doing some aerobic work as well. What takes place more at the emotional level or mind level? I mean, can you achieve some real, some great relaxation at the same time? Well, what you first said is uh, it looks like there's a lot of physical exercise going on there. You know, it, it does and there is. Um, there's lots of exercise and, and flexibility and things like that. But other times a lot of people will come into the school and they'll, they'll say, you know, it doesn't look overly exerting. Is this really a good workout? And we say, you know, that's why we'd like you to try the class, not just watch the class. Because it sure. looks, especially among practiced uh, Aikidoists, it looks, um, it can look effortless. But... Uh, there is nothing more exhausting than getting up and down and up and down and up and down, you know, being thrown and having to get back up 120 times in 120 minutes or because uh, our classes are about, you know, two hours long. So um, getting up hundreds of times in a, in a class is exhausting. And even the most conditioned athletes figure that out pretty quickly. They realize they're not breathing right. And no matter how good a shape they're in, if they're not breathing right, they're going to be sucking wind. Interesting. I mean, there has to be a, really a high level of concentration that takes place there as well. Um, some people have even said uh, humility um, during the practice itself. 
when you're new, there's an immense amount of concentration going on. Um, and, and we talk about there's thinking Aikido and then there's feeling Aikido. So when you're new, it's always thinking Aikido. Okay, is it left foot? Is it right foot? Is it my left hand, my right hand? Do I turn? Do I pivot? What do I do? And there's lots of thinking and concentration. It's very frustrating to a lot of people, or at least it can be. Um, but if you take away the expectation from yourself, it's actually a lot of fun. So stop judging yourself. You'll have a great time. Uh, as um, as you get better and better at Aikido, you stop thinking Aikido, you, have, you start feeling Aikido more, and you actually concentrate less because you end up thinking less, there's actually no thinking going on, and it's just this beautiful, fluid, powerful martial art. Interesting. Folks, take a look at the bottom of the screen right there. You're going to see their website. On the website, you can get a clearer idea, a little bit of history about uh, this martial art. Basically, they've got a schedule there. They've got uh, adult classes that we're at right now. But really, speaking of um, everything you're involved here, we're talking about eye-hand coordination, um, basically flexibility, fitness. This has to be a great tool for um, the youth as well. Is that something you provide? It is. Uh, we focus. We have no classes for little kids here, though. Um, Aikido is, uh, in my opinion, and lots of people uh, um, feel differently, but at our school here, um, our school focuses on adults, uh, and just in the last two and a half years, we started a teen program. Uh, we, you must be at least 13 years old, um, so 13 to 17 is for our teen program, and that's completely separate than our adult program, because uh, we have a lot of people traveling, a lot of adults traveling some rather large distances because they like our adult-only environment. So the teen classes, absolutely, they benefit from it tremendously, and the parents just express that to us over and over and over again. Wonderful. Well, we thank you for joining us. We're going to get inside the dojo. I'm going to see some of Great. this at work, and we've been showing you folks out there a lot of the video as well. Obviously, this is something that you want to check out. Um, you can contact them. They'll basically invite you into one of the classes, see if it's something for you. And uh, keep in mind, this was basically something, like he said, he fell into, and it turned out to be a, a real good fit for the folks here of Castle Rock as well as um, Douglas County. That is Castle Rock Aikido. Discover a power you never knew you had. This is Gary Atensi with CNTV, and if you don't know, now you know. Canine Rehabilitation and Conditioning Group leads the industry of animal rehabilitation and our caring team will help your dog or cat to feel stronger, move better and get back into the game of life. Our rehabilitation experts are leading the industry of restoring quality of life to geriatric, injured, overweight, post-operative and neurological or otherwise compromised dogs through physical therapy and integrative veterinary approaches. Fisher Van Lines is a family-owned and operated Denver mover with the experience and resources to manage your residential or commercial relocation. From planning and packing, transport and unpacking, we offer an array of professional moving and storage solutions to meet your needs. When you choose Fisher Van Lines as your Denver movers, you get a trained professional staff to ensure your move is well executed, on time and on budget. Fox Airsoft carries some of the biggest names in the airsoft industry and we strive to keep our gun selection stocked. It's from our extensive experience as airsoft players that we can provide solutions to problems encountered in the field. Complete accessories allow players to customize their gun. Automatic electric guns for beginners all the way up to Proline series guns with full metal externals and the most realistic features on the market today ensure you will be prepared to win in any field of your choice. This is Gary Atensi with CNTV, and today we're in Denver, Colorado. I'm here with the Web Welder. Basically, since 2003, they have been providing a way for small companies, medium-sized businesses to gain more exposure on the World Wide Web. Thank you, first of all, Mike, for meeting us with us today. Let's start off, first of all, why don't you share with us what got you involved in this industry? I started a marketing company um, back in the early 2000s, or right after 9-11. I came relocated from New York City to Colorado for physical rehabilitation after 
started a marketing company and one of my clients asked me if I did websites and I said I can do websites and my company took off from there. Wonderful. So basically for over 10 years now, you've been doing it here locally for the folks. Let me ask you, a lot of times as a business owner, we start to soon realize that we've got a physical location where we do our business, we've got a virtual location, and both of them need a lot of attention. Basically, is that what you're finding? Um, yeah, that, that is what I'm finding. Most of my larger clients actually aren't in Colorado. They're either in Minneapolis, Chicago, or New York City. Um, I do have a few in Australia and around the world. So. Let me ask you this, a lot of times as business owners, we realize we're really good at what we do, but quite honestly, for promoting ourselves is not our greatest feature. Let me ask you, why are some of the business owners starting to realize now that that should be left to the professional? Um, well, I'd like to actually change your question. Um, I've always worked behind the scenes, gave credit to my clients, and empowered them to do the best. Um, so I've always flown on under the radar as far as my own business has gone. I work almost 100% off of referrals. And um, it just so happens, as of late, I'm starting to get recognized. Uh, last June, I won the, my company won the best web services company in Denver. And then um, last month, I was inducted into the worldwide who's who. Wonderful. So you, you basically know how to promote from the backside, the front end. A lot of times, first of all, let's begin with the virtual website out there. Let's say somebody who doesn't even have a website or basically doesn't feel they have one that is representing who they are. What do you offer in the way of web design? Well, um, web design is just a marketing tool. My company is really a marketing company. Um, search engine optimization, internet marketing, and traditional marketing. We look at websites as just a marketing tool to help us get out there. Social marketing, from Twitter to Facebook, um, to traditional marketing of getting third-party endorsements in uh, newsprint, that all ties together. Obviously, it's best if a business brings you on from the get-go and you can build this thing and put it together. Let's say somebody out there who wants to add some pieces to an existing site, how do you go there? Um, that's actually where our, our company started. Um, we can take specific components and put it into an existing website. If a particular client needs social marketing integrated into their website, we can take that without redesigning their website for a minimal fee. We'll just take that little piece and kind of weld it into their website, if that makes sense. Obviously, online exposure is one of your expertise, but quite honestly, we're talking about events, promotions, traditional marketing, something you do as well. Yes, I do a lot of uh, event coordination for majority of my restaurants. Um, outside of my title as president for Web Welder, I'm the director for a program called Chowdown for Charity. And that's a non it's going to be a nonprofit organization that runs culinary events for fundraisers. Uh, f matches food and fundraising, culinary events for charities. Um, Project Angel Heart is one of our biggest um, beneficiaries of some of our events. Uh, last month we ran the Best Tasting Green Chili Contest. We have a contest coming up in May. Um, and we ran everything from cupcakes to the Best Tasting Chicken Wings um, to the Best Pies in Denver. Um, and we coordinate all that from start to finish, not just the online presence, but uh, attracting the press, getting the judges, bringing all the different restaurants in for that type of stuff. So not only are you out there in a virtual sense, but you're actually physically in the places where you actually do business with. I caught up with you here at the Citron Bistro. Obviously, hands-on is what you're all about. Yes, yes, I am. Thank you. I, um, the success of our clients have everything to do with the success, success of us. So outside of just making a website and their online presence, we'll do whatever it takes to make them successful. So once you've got the design put together, they're online. Obviously, that's just part of the picture there. What do you offer in the way of SEO as far as the search engine optimization so that people do find those sites? Um, my company prefers to use natural search engine optimization methods rather than paying for it. We can always pay for it and get you number one. But the natural search engine optimization will build strong roots on the internet and help people find them a specific company in multiple facets. So we're talking about organic is something that you basically put out there. I imagine this way folks are able to track nicely their bottom line. Obviously that's what people are looking for anymore. Yeah, many companies use their, mar their website or mobile site as their primary marketing tool. Right. Let me ask you, speaking of mobile websites, I know a lot of times I've seen businesses out there and they don't realize that not everyone is able to access their site because a lot of folks are just picking them up on their phones. Are you able to make those sites mobile friendly as well? Yeah, we, we create what we call uh, responsive, mobile, uh, responsive design, which means any device that connects to a specific website, it, it'll, find, it'll locate what type of device it is and display that website within that format. Wonderful. 
I know one of the things as a business owner, a lot of times we're, we're kind of afraid to call on a professional because many times we don't understand the jargon. We don't understand how, how to communicate that. Are you able to speak to them in pretty much layman's terms? Absolutely. Um, we don't use any jargo, techno jargon um, at all. Um, I explain things to people and communicate with them in the format that they like. Um, I think that's part of marketing. It's part of everything. They don't need to necessarily need to know the intricate details. Some of them do. Some of them want to know what what certain things are called, or they'll do research on the internet and ask me, well, what's this, what's that? And Wonderful. Like you touched on earlier, you basically said it's more than just a website or a design. That's just one of the tools and the many that you offer as far as marketing for people out there. Let me ask you a little bit on social media here. What do you offer in the way of Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn? Well, my company is the only company in Denver that will actually buy fans. Uh, we can buy Facebook fans, Twitter followers, um, LinkedIn likes, uh, Google Plus ones, um, and it works basically like a mailing list. You could buy a mailing list for direct marketing, for direct mailing in any particular zip code. My company can actually do that on social marketing. So a new business or business that has kind of struggled, fell off the radar, that wants to cast a wide net out there, we can actually find those individuals and bring them into the fold. Wonderful. And not only what those numbers do for the credibility for the, for the businesses, something else. Absolutely. Wonderful. One of the ones that uh, kind of up and coming here is Pinterest. Do you offer anything there as well? Yes, we can. Out, we actually buy pins. So if we want, if you, if a company or an individual, because we do work with individuals as well, if they want specific pins, we can find those for them. Absolutely. Wonderful. Uh, how do people get involved with you? What's the best way for them to contact? Does it begin with a consultation, or what would you like? Yeah, basically, it. it starts with a consultation and really access the particular needs of that company and see where we can fit and see what um, would work best for them. We're all about what's working best for our clients. Um, we don't really look at our clients as clients, we look at them as partners. Because uh, their success has everything to do with our success and we've been lucky enough in the last 10 years of working 100% off of referrals. So basically you're not coming in and taking over my company, you're basically sitting down with me as a partner, listening what I want and taking it from there. Absolutely. Um, my company does provide probably the best ROI when it comes to website design or marketing services for companies. If we have an owner out there who's thinking about bringing you on as a partner with their company, what would you tell them? Um, I'm sorry. If there was a company owner out there possibly thinking about bringing you on as a partner, what would you explain to them? I would explain to them, uh, um, I would assess, assess their needs and see exactly where they're deficient in specific areas and see if we can find find an avenue that would work for them. We're all about the success of our of our clients. Um, so if there's a particular provider that can provide a service better than we can, we're going to bring them into the fold. Wonderful. Folks, take a look right there on the bottom of the screen. You're going to see their contact information. You're also going to see his website right there as well. Keep in mind, you can see all the different services. Like he said before, they do offer web design, but that is just one piece of the overall puzzle they can provide for you in the marketing world out there. And as you know, the better exposure out there is bringing people through your front doors as well. Remember, that is Web Welder. Create, communicate, and connect. This is Gary Atensi with CNTV. And if you don't know, now you know. Medical Massage International provides the public with independent, competent healthcare practitioners through the art of massage. We train therapists to last and sustain a career beyond our school by entering them into the medical world of massage. Establishing core values within our students to bring out the best in themselves is our goal. You too can join this diverse group of therapists to thrive in the medical massage world. Until next time, if you know of a business who you feel the whole city should know about, nominate them, we'll send a reporter out. This is Gary Atencio from CNTV, and if you don't know, now you know. This summer, scream down the Mile High Flyer, Colorado's only water coaster.
Come fly on the Mile High Flyer. Only at Waterworld. Save up to 50 bucks on family four packs at King Supers. Fly. service barbershop that caters to men's unique style and personality. Stylists are trained in shaving, haircutting, beard trimming, and designing, shampooing, and styling. Escape into a world of total comfort, relaxation, and rejuvenation. Treat yourself to an experience of a quality haircut, face shaves with a straight razor or safety razor, massage therapy, manicure, pedicure, color, or wax performed by the specially selected Knockouts Girls. Indulge yourself with a unique Knockouts cut, style, or other grooming service. Our first class service includes today's most advanced coloring and hair management techniques and products. Our staff are specially selected and your services are assured. As always, walk-ins are welcome. Don't leave your appearance to just any salon. You deserve the best in men's hair care and grooming. Knockouts, the best place for men's hair care and grooming.